of each and every one of you here. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then I want to read something for you. Father, I pray that you'd bless us in this special time when we think about 17 years ago and you laid it on our hearts to have a church in Searcy. And uh, Lord, we're thankful for every blessing along the way. Thank you for the way you've uh, spoken to your people and led your people, and thank you for the ones that you've put together during the Sunday school hour. And Lord, we look forward to the next hour as well when we can magnify your precious and holy name. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless this service. May our hearts be filled with joy as we think about the blessings of the Lord at Liberty Baptist Church. Bless, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. I, I would like to uh, read just a, a short passage of scripture to you. We're gonna do a number of different things today, and so we're gonna try to have a good time. Everybody ready? Uh, don't get too excited all at once. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Cause a pastor to have a heart attack that way. Uh, Second Chronicles, if you turn to, in your Bibles there, I just want to read a short passage that I think would be an appropriate passage to read. Second Chronicles chapter number 5. And uh, I was thinking about King David. He, was, uh, he had a heart for the Lord. And he had a heart to build the house of the Lord, the temple. And uh, he, gathered the, uh, he gathered the materials. And then his son, Solomon, put it all together and built the temple. And uh, thinking about men of God like that in the past and how they had an expectation that God was going to do something for them in that house that they built. And so in 1 Chronicles chapter number 5, look at, look at verse number 1. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments uh, he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. Now skip on down to verse number 12. It talks about their preparations to sing and to celebrate. And verse number 12 it says, And also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph and Heman and Jeduthun and their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding the trumpets. Sound like they had a pretty good celebration going on, don't you think? Uh, the instruments, instruments were playing, uh, people were singing, and look at verse 13, and it, it says it came to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good mark for a church to have, isn't it, in the New Testament, to be as one, being together and having our uh, directions in the same direction, being on the same page of the book. Then he says to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And that's what we want to do today is to praise and thank the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good. And that's... Uh, that's our focus is the Lord himself. We, we love our church. We love each other. Uh, we love everybody the Lord brings into this place. But we, uh, we love the Lord supremely. And uh, that's what our focus wants to be on today is what the Lord has done for us. It says, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. And that's what I think every preacher and every church member wants for their own church. Uh, I understand this is Old Testament temple, but it was the house that represented God's presence. And uh, we as individual believers know that the Holy Spirit of God dwells within us, but when we come together as the church, uh, the Lord is in this place. Isn't that true? And so when we gather together on a day like this, when we say this is our celebration of our anniversary, uh, the beginning of our church in 1997, then we want the glory of God to be in this place. And I sense the glory of God. Uh, most of the time when we're together, I think God is with us. And uh, once in a while when I don't sense that the Lord is with us, he may be anyway and it's just me. <laughs> or maybe it's just you. But I, I think about the glory of God and I I don't think it matters so much about the size of the church or the wealth of the church or the popularity of the church. I think what really matters, number one, is the glory of God being in the place. And uh, I pray that the Lord will be here 
uh, with us today. We've been 17 years, and it's been an adventure. And uh, I'm glad to have uh, Brother and Mrs. Sneathern with us today. And, uh, and they were part of that adventure, and I'll tell you a little more about that in a little while. But I, I hope church is an adventure to you. I, I, remember as, I remember as a young person, uh, especially as a teenager, I wanted excitement. Didn't you? You remember being a teenager? Well, some of you is too far back. But <laughs> uh, as uh, being a teenager, I thought, man, I wanted to be. I wanted to be where something's happening. I wanted to be where people are. I wanted to be where something's going on. I wanted to be in the middle of the action. I wanted everything to be an adventure. And uh, and so through many years of my life, I've I've moved around and been here and yonder and lived in uh, lived in Mount Pleasant most of my life until I moved off to go to Bible College in Oklahoma City. Uh, pardon me? Uh, don't mention that. <laughs> That's nearly as bad as Texas. <laughs> and uh, been all over the place, lived in different places, but we've been put here now for 17 years. 17 years is almost as long <laughs> as I stayed put in, uh, in my hometown. And uh, because I guess I was looking for an adventure, even after I got saved, looking for an adventure. And... Uh, came across a little story about a man by the name of Horace Walpole. Nobody ever heard of him, have you? Horace Walpole. Well, life had become drab for him, and, and in 1754, he picked up a fairy tale book and began to read. And as he read that fairy tale book, about three princes seeking an adventure, a smile broke out across his face. And he called, or they didn't have phones in those days, he wrote to uh, his friend, longtime friend, Horace Mann. You probably have heard of him. And he wrote to Horace Mann, and uh, he told him about a thrilling new approach that he had found to life. And he said this, he said, I've, I've been reading a fairy tale book about three princes who set out to find an adventure. They set out seeking treasure, and as they were seeking the treasure, they, they started on from the island of Ceylon, and uh, as they were, went about their adventure, seeking treasure, they found adventure along the way. And they talked about the delights that they found. They didn't find the treasure, but they found delights along the way as they were seeking for the treasure. And as they, as they made their way through life, going from one place to another, they learned to delight in the things that happened day by day. And uh, they anticipated a treasure, but they learned to enjoy the treasures along the way. And I, I saw a little picture on the internet the other day. It was a picture, beautiful picture of a rainbow. And it said, some people are always looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And the caption under it is, we finally found the pot of gold. We finally found the pot at the end of the rainbow, and the rainbow ended right over an outhouse. <laughs> Some people are looking for something, and they know not what, but life is an adventure. And here's, here's the reason I told you that little story, because in 17 years at Liberty Baptist Church, I've had a great number of delights and pleasures along the way, and have not found the treasure at the end of the rainbow, but I found a lot of delights, and a lot of the delights are sitting in this room today, and some will be here during the next hour, and uh, some are not even here anymore. Some have moved on. But I found delight in living life day by day and enjoying the church I have. I, I don't need to move to find a new church. I just need to enjoy the pleasures and the delights of the one I have. And so uh, hope you're looking to enjoy the adventures of the day, wherever and however they might happen. We'll have some testimonies along the way today and tonight, and, uh, and somebody will tell about the adventures they've had, and I hope you'll enjoy it with them. I think we've got a ladies' group that's going to come and sing. Ladies, uh, that's, one of those, uh, that's one of those precious uh, delights that we have is God's given us some people that love to sing, and come ahead on up, ladies, and these ladies are one of those delights. Steve. 
even was accused lonely and bewildered and no one would come to stand by his side he just looked up into heaven and he saw the face of jesus and he rolled him over the tide i never said a prayer he couldn't answer i never shed a tear he could not try and when the waves of life are so high you can mount them he will roll you over the tide and when this world is closing in and my life becomes a burden i want to run but there's no place to hide I just look up into heaven to the right hand of my father and he rolls me over the tide. I never said a prayer he couldn't answer. I never shed a tear he could not try. And when the waves of life are so high you can mount them, he will roll you over the tide. I never said a prayer he couldn't answer. I never shed a tear he could not try. And when the waves of life are so high you can't mount them, he will roll you over the tide. And when the waves of life are so high you can't mount them, he will roll you Think about, think about Stephen. I mean, the martyr Stephen, as they were stoning him to death, he looked steadfastly up into heaven, had his eyes fixed upon Jesus, and a person could smile and enjoy life and find an adventure and a delight in that. We should be able to find a delight in about anything, shouldn't we? Somebody ought to say amen right there. I mean, really, uh, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen found delight where there wasn't a delight except for the Lord. Well, one of those delights I've had along the way is uh, Brother Denny. Uh, Brother Elvis, you, you, know who, you know who he is, don't you? He's uh, uh, Ernie Martin's nephew, is that right? Did you know that? <laughs> I just made a bunch of enemies for you. <laughs> yeah, his, uh, his, Miss Beard, his mother, was a teacher. Did she, teach? she did teach at Mount Pleasant at one time, didn't she? And uh, Brother Denny just retired from the hospital here in Searcy. And uh, I got to know Brother Denny back when I was going through a trial in my life. And he did a, a, a CAT scan for me there in the hospital. And I can think some old jokes about the CAT scans, but I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate Brother Denny. And uh, I think Miss Charlotte uh, is eventually the one who, uh, who got him to come to church. Brother Denny, won't you come and tell us? Uh, something from your life and your experience at Liberty Baptist Church. Well, I think most of the folks that are here probably have uh, heard my previous testimony about uh, my poor church attendance and my poor commitment to church. And I think you've heard the testimony that I finally made a commitment and decided to do uh, for God and for church what I was supposed to do. And I don't mean this to be uh, said wrong, but it was more or less a challenge. I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to attend like I'm supposed to, and I'm going to see what happens. 
and uh, I did make a commitment to come and to be here and to participate. There was a, a big race that was run by a bunch of boys, a bunch of little boys, and they won trophies. And one little boy told his father, he said, uh, well, Dad, I, di I didn't get a trophy. And the father said, well, son, you didn't run in the race. You can't get a trophy unless you run in the race. So uh, it's kind of like going to church. If you don't participate, if you don't belong, if you don't commit yourself to being here, if you don't uh, uh, do what you're supposed to do, then you're not going to win any trophies. And it's strange that you've mentioned trophies while ago. I have always wondered what church family was in all of my time going to church before you make acquaintances you meet people you make some friends but you don't really grow unless you see those people on a continual basis unless you participate since I've come here and felt the love and the warmth of this church and the people in this church since I started coming I've learned what a true church family uh, and I just want you to know that I love you all and I love Liberty Baptist Church. Well, I don't know if you noticed or not, but our, our theme, and I'll say a little more about it during the next hour, but after this comes from Revelation chapter 4, verse number 1, uh, when, when John uh, finished with the revelation that he had seen concerning the present, then it says after this, and then he was caught up in a vision to heaven, and uh, after this, I think about the people that's been in our church for a long time. Sometimes we, we tend to get used to the things we see and hear all the time. And the Lord may be blessing, and we may get a little bit immune to it, to recognizing it. And so hearing people like Brother Denny that's just been in the church a short period of time reminds us that besides the establishing of the church, 17 years ago but what happens after this after this and uh, and so if things are still happening and people are still being blessed and we get you know we know each other I mean we're a small church we don't pretend to be big I mean you know we've got 5,000 members but only about 50 to 75 show up <laughs> and you know I, I, I give up on uh, trying to play that numbers game a long time ago where you try to brag about how many people you've got and everybody knows better, you know. So we, we, uh, we wish we had 5,000, but sometimes we, we fail to recognize that the Lord is blessing right where we are right now and that he will continue to bless in the future. And uh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am about Brother Denny uh, being in our church. He's, uh, he's running the... The Faith Bible Institute, Brother Paul and Miss D is going to be going to the mission field soon, and, and they've uh, overseen that for a number of years. And now Brother Denny stepped up to take uh, oversight of that ministry. He teaches a, a boys and girls Sunday school class, and he's an usher, and, uh, and, and he's a superb volleyball player. <laughs> so that's really the reason we're glad we got him is because he can play volleyball. <laughs> But it's a blessing. And so we know each other, but you know what we're doing? We're recounting the blessings of God in our midst. And everybody in here knows every story, every illustration, every joke that I've ever thought of. Once in a while I come up with a new one and people just stare at me because they're not used to a new joke, you know. And uh, so what we do in a time like this is we're not necessarily telling you anything new. What we're trying to do is to refresh our memory that God is still blessing and the blessings are among us. Another uh, uh, delight, and I'll introduce him in just a minute, but I, I will do something right now. Uh, when I first got saved, my, my new Christianity was an adventure. Brother Sneathan was my pastor and, uh, and he had us sing choruses a lot of times. And one of the choruses he had us to sing 
And I'm going to do just like he did. I'm going to ask you to stand up if you're able. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing, I'm happy today. You remember that, Brother Snathan? Do you still sing that sometimes? We're going to sing it together. You ready? I'm happy today. I'm happy today in Jesus Christ. I'm happy today. He has taken all my sins away, and that's why I'm happy today. Be seated, please. Thank you for singing. Brother Marcus, would you come up? Brother Marcus uh, found us on the Internet. He was living over in Valonia, moving back to Searcy, and he wanted to find a Bible preaching church, and so he came and, uh, and, and stuck. How long has it been? Over, over a year, hasn't it? In January. And Brother Marcus has answered God's call to preach since he's been here. So come ahead and give us a testimony. Uh, well, kind of like Brother Denny, you know, I am thankful for this church. Um, I was saved in 2011. And, you know, shortly after that, I started to learn how rare good churches are. I, um, and at that time, I was living in Valonia, or actually Conway at that time, then Valonia. I moved back to Searcy in December of uh, 2012. And then uh, when I came back, I was kind of concerned about finding a church home. I um, you know, thank God I kind of reached out to someone first, and they said they seen a church sign here. And then um, I came to visit, and then after that, I um, I'd also checked out the church online and started liking the church. I um, yeah, and since January 2013, I've been here. You know, I've been loving it. I um, I'm very thankful for this church. Like I say, you know, churches like this they're rare. I, um, and there's even some, there's a lot of churches, you know, they would even treat, you know, some people with a background of mine, they treat me like a second class Christian or something like that. But, um, you know, Pastor, I mean, you have a great church. I'm very thankful for it. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to preach here. And I uh, never felt unwelcome ever since the first time I've um, felt very welcome here. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful for this place. I, uh, I, you know, I hear. I hear people preaching online about churches. They complain about a lot of things that you know I haven't had to deal with here. And I, uh, you know, I, uh, I I pray that I get to stay here for a long time. I, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for this place and for you all too. I uh, I, I love uh, fellowshipping with you all, just spending time with you. I, uh, you know, I even love Brother Aaron. You know, he. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, and I mean, and, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, places like this they are rare. I mean, this, I mean, this is a one of a kind place. I, um, you know, I've been a Christian for too long, but I thank God I have realized that, and this is a special place. And all right, thank you all. I love y'all. Thank you. Well, since he brought up his past, let me tell you a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have an agreement around here, Brother Snaither. I don't ask them about their past, and they don't ask me, and so we're happy. <laughs> yeah, we've all got a few skeletons in our closet, and so we just leave them there. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I, I find a great deal of joy in, in, in people like Brother Marcus. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a sincere heart, and sincere people. Uh, you're talking about rare, rare churches. Sincere people are rare things today, too, people who don't have any front to put up they're just what you see is what you get you know and that's not an excuse for for what they do wrong they're just saying I I, I am who I am I'm not any anybody any greater than I pretend to be you know and so we love each other well so she doesn't suffer any longer I'm going to, well let me make her suffer just a little longer let's sing one more let's sing one more chorus um, Let's sing, The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. You won't have to stand this time, but you've got to sing. Will you sing? Amen. 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 Two of us are going to sing. All right, let's sing, The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. 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 Now, brothers, neither may used to make us sing the next verse to that which is uh, how does that go uh, my heart he fills my heart with laughter ha 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 and uh, y'all want to sing that you feel like doing that on Sunday morning do you let's do all right you asked for it let's do it he fills my heart with laughter ha 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 he fills my heart with laughter ha 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 he fills my heart with laughter ha 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 
ha. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, just so you know, we got women in this church too, and we love the ladies in our church. And truth is, if it wasn't for the ladies in our church, we'd be in a mess. Um, they kind of watch out for us men who try to take all the credit for everything. But uh, I, there's a dear lady, Miss Jo, why don't you come up? And uh, yeah, she thought she's going to get out of it. And I want her, uh, she grew, well, she grew up around here and then moved off up into Yankee land for a number of years. And, and, uh, and, and, and she was married for a number of years before he passed away to a man who had a, a heart for the Lord and uh, got, had his family in a good Bible preaching church. And so uh, then after she, well, actually they moved back to Arkansas together. I didn't meet her until just a few years ago. And, and uh, she started coming to our church. But knowing uh, her background, she wanted to be in a good Bible preaching church. And so we appreciate Miss Jo. Come and speak just for a minute or so. I am, first of all, I'm glad that I'm saved and uh, glad to be in this church. And we found this church. I didn't. My son did through the Internet. I'm thankful for the Internet, even though I don't use it. But, and you're talking about delights. It is a delight to be in this church, but it's really a delight to, to watch my family. Um, they were singing up here a while ago, about half of them. And so it's good to see my uh, grandkids growing in a good Bible-believing church and, and my family, and I'm just thankful to be here. What poise and what calmness. I think she could have brought a message while she was here, don't you? <laughs> Oh, is that, that's the way they do me. I'm used to it, too. <laughs> the only time, I just have to catch people by surprise when I sing. <laughs> I never get invited. Well, amen. Uh, I want to uh, ask Brother, you haven't sung yet, have you, Brother Sneathern? Why don't you come? And uh, Brother Sneathern and Mrs. Sneathern, Mrs. Sneathern, why don't both of you stand together? Now, I'm not going to ask you to sing. Just relax. <laughs> She's... Actually, she begs me all the time to let her sing a special, and I won't let her. <laughs> She's like my wife. Brother and Mrs. Sneather, uh, this, this was a pastor and his wife who uh, were in the church at First Baptist in Mount Pleasant when I got saved in, in 1980, and they have been dear, dear uh, people, friends, pastor and his wife, and uh, Miss Wanda's just like a real sister, and Brother Elvis is just like a real grandfather to me. And, <laughs> Brother Elvis, come and, uh, come and, and uh, give a word of testimony and sing for us, would you? Well, I, uh, my wife got saved. We lived in West Memphis, Arkansas, a young couple. We had our uh, first child, and uh, God really convicted me uh, that uh, we had brought a child into the world. Didn't know how to tell him how to get out of this world, and because we were both lost. And then she, uh, we... Uh, uh, had some friends that went to a fundamental Bible preaching Baptist church and they invited us to go and uh, I would go oh, once every six or eight weeks and uh, uh, my wife got saved and I, I thought well you, you know she wanted me to go to church with her and I thought well I, I need to be a good husband so I started going about once a month and uh, but anyway I heard enough of the word of God uh, that I got saved <clears throat> and I, uh, I appreciate the testimony this morning Brother Marcus uh, said something about uh, that uh, uh, they didn't treat him like a second-class citizen. I, I believe in the eyes of God there are no second-class citizens. And uh, I believe uh, uh, a good church is one that does this. They, they preach the gospel. They preach the word of God. They preach against sin, but they love sinners. And uh, uh, when you do that, uh, there are no second-class citizens. And I, I get joy. Now, uh, um, I've been, God called me to preach and and I've been pastoring for a long time now, and and uh, had you know been far from perfect. There are no perfect churches. There are no perfect pastors. But uh, through all that, there's uh, there's five men that are pastoring churches that uh, you know God did the calling and God did the preparation and He used other people also in their lives. But I had a uh, I just had the privilege of be, being connected to those guys a little bit. And Brother Rick is one of those guys. I you know the story I love to tell. I told you the other night I was preaching, Brother and Arrival. And I told the other night about Brother Rick was uh, caring, and the kids got saved, and they lived across the road from the church. And Brother Rick, when I'd knock on the front door, he'd peep out the window and see it was me, and he'd go out the back door. And uh, uh, But he knew that I taught the auditorium Sunday school class every Sunday morning 
from 10 to 11, and then, I, of course, the worship service from 11 to 12, so he knew that he was safe during that time. And so I got somebody else to teach my class one Sunday, and I knocked on his door. He knew it wasn't me, so he opened the door. And uh, I went in and witnessed to him. He was kind to me, uh, but he used that famous phrase. It, uh, I guess lost people think it's so spiritual, I'm just not ready yet. Uh, but two weeks later, he walked the aisle, and the church got saved, and uh, he's been a dear friend ever since. And what I get blessed out of now, I mean, I get blessed because uh, what God, God has done in Brother Rick's life, uh, but God uh, put in his heart to come back to Searcy and start this church. And so I get blessed out of coming here and seeing you folks and uh, seeing what, uh, and I know that God does it in somebody's life and other people may have impacted your life in a tremendous way, but God's used Brother Rick and his family here. And so I see you co-laboring together with him and I see a good church here that's reaching out. And uh, if I lived in Searcy, Arkansas, if you all would let me be, I'd be a member of this church, I guarantee you that. Now, I don't know how long that lasts. Brother Rick would probably throw me out. But anyway, uh, I appreciate you folks. I'm going to try to try to say, I've sung this here before, but, uh, but uh, you know, uh, none of us would have anything to testify about if it wasn't for the Lord. So I want to sing a song called, uh, when you, by the way, let me introduce somebody to you. Brother Chris, you stand up. This is Chris Sage. Brother Chris is a missionary to Guadalajara, Mexico. And uh, he was coming through our area, spent the night at our place last night, uh, came down here going to Hot Springs, speaking a Spanish-speaking church this afternoon. And so uh, I, it'd be wonderful he learned Spanish. I, we go to the mission field, Brother Rick, and we had to speak through interrupters, I mean interpreters. But anyway, uh, but uh, uh, Brother Chris, good to have you here this morning. And uh, Brother uh, Aaron, if you'll go ahead and, and uh, push the button on that. We'll, there we go. <coughs>
and you'll know something happened when Jesus passed by. Yes, you'll know something happened when Jesus passed by. Well, thank you, Brother Snathern. What a blessing when Jesus passed by. What if I was handing out $100 bills this morning? Would anybody take one? Huh? Only one person in the room. Two. Now, yeah, we're, now we're getting some participation. I mean, really, what if I just pulled out a wad of $100 bills and said, anybody can have some of these? How many wants one? I, I think, yeah, I think we'd get some participation. I mean, you think, I'm, you think I'm joking, so you're not playing along with me, but if I pulled out the $100 bills, you'd get serious. Amen. Yeah, you'd be leaning forward and saying, here, here. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, you know, the day I went to church and heard Brother Sneather preach about the day that the rapture would happen and he preached on Noah's Ark and when they closed the door on the Ark the people on the outside were left on the outside forever and uh, I heard that preach that day and I decided I don't want to be left outside forever and so I, uh, I received the Lord that day and, and I was just as green as a gourd didn't know anything I don't know much more now a little bit but uh, I told Brother Sneed and as I was going out the door I shook hands with him and, uh, and it fits with the song he just sang I didn't know exactly what to say, you know. <laughs> uh, I was kind of like the little boy that got baptized. And, uh, the preacher baptized two or three people, and every time he raised one up out of the baptistry, somebody would say, praise the Lord. He baptized another, and they'd say, hallelujah. This little boy got baptized, and when he came up out of the water, he didn't know anything original to say. He came up out of the water, and he said, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> and but I knew that I met Jesus that day, and I shook hands with Brother Sneather, and I just said, I believe the Lord was in this place today. And uh, you know, Jesus held out his hand, and I took his hand that day. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I got saved. Uh, one, of the, one of the delights that you have uh, in a church is seeing people that surrender to do different things. Brother Marcus surrendering to the ministry, and Brother Denny taking over some responsibilities, and and uh, places going to the mission field and, and other people. Uh, Miss Carrie is overseeing Master Club and people doing different things. And, and uh, another delight is seeing uh, somebody d decide to go to the mission field, believe that God's will is for them to go there. And Miss Kimberly Blackburn did that, uh, said she wanted to go to the mission field, and then she got sick and, uh, and almost died on us a little over a month ago. And uh, on Wednesday evening, before church, man, it, it sounded really serious. It sounded like the doctors were about to give up, and some of the family thought it was over. And and uh, we came back here to the church on Wednesday night. And first time I think it ever happened, brother Sneed, and I didn't preach. I don't think I even preached that night. I just uh, I was just overwhelmed, you know. I thought this this is so strange, you know, that she just was lively and amidst uh, and among the midst of us a few days ago, and now she's they're, they're not expecting her to live, and. Uh, so we just, I, I read a couple of verses, and we just all prayed. And, uh, I mean, we wept and prayed because we were just shocked. And so we begged God to spare her life, and, and God did. And uh, Miss Kimberly, why don't you come and, and uh, share a, a word of testimony with us. It's a great pleasure to have her here. And uh, I'm not going to steal her testimony. She can tell you whatever she wants to, but we love Miss Kimberly. God bless you. My journey with this church began actually with door knocking. Somebody, I know who, um, knocked on my brother's door and got him and his family here. My nieces are here today, actually. And uh, my nephew actually had to cry to get me to come. My big bad Marine nephew, he was 12 at the time. Um, and I came, it was the last Wednesday of 2005, and I was bored to tears. So I was one of those really frustrating people that say, oh, I'm going to come Monday, Sunday, and then you don't. Yeah, that was me. And, um, but Josh cried again. He understand my nephew's a con man before boot camp, but this is one of those times he used his powers for good and not evil, and he got me here, and I was saved on January 12th of 2006. Pastor was in India, interestingly enough. And um, am I that boring? <laughs> Ooh, sorry. 
I'll just break things now. But um, through this church, my you know, since I've been here, I've been to Bible college. I you know, surrendered to the mission field. I've met some of the very best friends I've ever had. I even discovered I had a little brother that I never wanted. If you don't know who that is, you'll figure it out. He's in the sound booth. But, um, but I discovered through all this that I had a family. And that was never more evident than it was in August. Like he said, I was a little sick, just a little bit. And um, I don't remember much. I remember when I was about to pass out in the lobby to be um, waiting to be admitted that Miss Karen got up and took some people out to get me back there. I don't know what she said to them, but they got me back there right then. Um, pretty sure she threatened somebody. But <laughs> and... Um, and then I remember waking up. That's pretty much what I remember. But as I woke up, I was under sedation. I was on that stupid respirator. I hated that thing. I'm still trying to get my voice back. Um, but I started hearing stories. Stories about how this church rallied around me and my family. Not just my nieces, my brother, my s sister-in-law, my parents. My Uncle Charlie. You guys rallied around my Uncle Charlie, my cousin. You know. And uh, I heard stories about... One day, my uncle came with his grandson. He's raising his grandson. He had to bring him. And he thought he wouldn't be able to come back to see me because there was no family in the waiting room. So Miss Karen watched him and gave him enough gum or money to buy lots of gum. Carson loves you. I'm going to tell you. And then I heard stories about the night that I wasn't supposed to live through. And somebody named Mel decided to read the Bible in my room all night long. Becky, the nurse, she's the one that told me this. She, uh, she said she felt the Spirit of God in there. And that was part of the reason why she believes I survived. Um, I heard a story my sister-in-law told me at the same night where she was, you don't understand, my sister-in-law, she's the sister I never had. God finally gave me a sister when she finally, Terry finally was wised up and married a good girl instead of the crazy people. And, um, so we're pretty close, and she was reacting to the fact that I was probably going to die that night. And she told me about my pastor kneeling in front of her. And she said he, get, he comforted her, calmed her down, gave her hope. It's just little things like that, um, little things like the, the prayer meeting that happened here that Wednesday night. And then word started spreading from this church. I don't know how you guys did it. But literally, it went around the world. Literally, it went around the world. I have people coming up to me all the time saying, oh, we were praying for you. How are you doing? And I was like, I'm fine. Who are you? And then they tell me what church they went to. I have no idea where that is. I've never heard of that church ever in my life. And I have no clue how you found out about me that they did. And uh, it's because of you guys. I honestly believe if it wasn't for this church, I probably would be dead right now. And also, I honestly believe if it wasn't for this church, I probably wouldn't be having it right now because I was saved here. So thank you for starting the church. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you know, and um, thank you. You guys are my family, even though you cause me much get in trouble all the time, Brother Ed, and torment me, call me short, Marcus. But <laughs> he thinks he's taller than me. But, um, but thank you. I love all of you. Well, praise the Lord. We're just thanking the Lord for what he does. And uh, whether it's many or few, I think, uh, I think we have some quality, quality people who love the Lord and depend on him here. We'll t hear more about it, uh, get more testimonies in in the next hour and some testimonies tonight. And if you'd like to give a testimony... And uh, you'll see me after church. We'll, uh, we'll write your name down. Try, I don't want to leave anybody out that wants to testify. Some like to talk publicly and some are scared to. And so the, some of the quietest people in our church are some of the most faithful saints that we have. And uh, though their voice may not be heard publicly, they talk to the Lord on behalf of you and me and the rest of us uh, quite often. And uh, a lot of the quietest people and, and most 
obscure people in the congregation sometimes do things for the Lord that you'll never ever know about this side of heaven and so we're thankful for every every member we have thankful for all the testimonies and the singing we got the got the next hour lined up and we're going to do more and, uh, and Brother Sneedham is going to preach for us in an hour would you stand please and we'll uh, we'll have a word of prayer and we'll dismiss for about 10 minutes and then we'll meet back in here and uh, let's pray together shall we Father thank you for the blessed privilege to be together with your people and our visitors and uh, Lord I pray that you'd bless everything that's done Lord we want to please you with what we do and Lord we're just trying to brag on you today for the way you've worked in the lives of your people thank you bless them the hour to follow we pray in Jesus name amen all right see you in a few minutes
is old fashioned grace through faith. Me.
Good morning. Welcome to Liberty Baptist Church today. Stand with me, number 322. 322, stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he Celebration Day, Anniversary Sunday, 17 years that Liberty Baptist Church has been in existence. I think it existed always in the mind of the Lord, and uh, we're glad that it's manifest here in Searcy, Arkansas. Thank you, visitors, for coming and being with us this morning. God bless every one of you for being here. Thank you for our members being here, and uh, and we're glad Brother Snethern and Mrs. Snethern's here. Uh, Brother Snethern was my pastor that I was uh, saved under and called to preach under. So everything that you don't like about me, blame it on him. <laughs> and we're glad that he's with us. And he's going to be preaching for us in a little while. And he's going to be singing for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, and we'll have Brother Snethern to sing. Father, thank you for the wonderful time we've had together in the Sunday school hour already. And thank you for the songs that we've heard, the testimonies that have blessed our hearts. And Lord, we just want you to know with from the bottom of our heart, we love you and thank you that you've given us a church here in Searcy that we can love and cherish and be members of and we can welcome visitors into. And Lord, we pray that, that this celebration today would only be marking the brand new beginning of another year, a new year, and expectations of what you're going to do for us this year. Lord, I pray you'd stir our hearts this morning. We don't want to go away discouraged we don't want to go away sad we don't want to go away frustrated we want to go away in hope and expectation of tomorrow lord and that only comes through your power bless this morning we pray in a special way in jesus name amen and be seated please mansions will glisten on the hills of glory happy reunions on streets of gold angel choir singing glad praises forever but jesus will outshine them all oh what glory Waits me in heaven's bright city when I get there, such sights I'll behold. A million scenes of rare beauty will demand that I view them. Still, Jesus will outshine them all. Will glisten on the 
listen on the hills of glory happy reunions on streets of gold angel choir singing glad praises forever but jesus will outshine them all the sparkling river is flowing happy faces all glowing land of splendor where night never falls the golden glass gives reflection to that city's perfection still jesus will outshine them all mansions will glisten on the hills of glory happy reunions on streets of gold 